first one, u, which is simply, I'll put it this way, it's a set of everything, right? It's the universe. It's that universal discourse. That's the big box that occurs in the Venn diagram. Uh, two, everything we are talking about. This is the empty set, or called the null set. What is the empty set? The empty set is the set that doesn't have anything in it. Most things that we model have to usually have a nothing. All right, when we have numbers, there's a zero. It's important to actually have a zero. It's a multiplicative dominator. It's the additive identity. When you go to uh, linear algebra, right, we have the zero object. Right? It's the zero vector. What's a zero vector? Well, what space are you in? And if it's nth dimensional space, it's a vector of n objects, all of which are zero. But on the other hand, if you're talking about matrix vector space, what's the zero object? It's a matrix of the sizes you're talking about full of zeros. It's the big O matrix. Well, what if it's the zero function? It's the function that maps everybody to the height of zero. Right? What's a zero polynomial? It's the polynomial whose coefficients are all zero. Right? We have things that represent what are you talking about? Who's your nothing? For set theory, what are we talking about? Collections of stuff. <laughs> Who's your nothing? It's a collection with nothing in it. What's interesting about the null set or the empty set, it is just like the zero number has all these properties, the null set has a bunch of very useful things that we have to worry about. It'll have under operators, it will be a dominator. It'll also be an identity, depending on the operation that we're talking about. All right, third. Um, would be a bunch of number sets that we should know. All right, all of the number sets have a double bracket on one of the sides. N, which is the natural numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3. Double bar N called the natural numbers. This is also called the non-negative integers, if you want to talk about it that way. So whenever I write n, double bar n, what am I talking about? 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way out. Um, double bar z. What's the name of that? What are those numbers called? It's the integers, right? So if I write double bar z, it's all integers. If I write double bar z with a plus, Which sets that? Just the positive integers, right? So whole numbers, right? The counting numbers, things that all kids know. Intellectually, this is the first thing that people get. It's a collection of one thing, then one one, then one one one. You keep, we just order it in terms of always getting one more. Zero doesn't make sense. It takes a while until the zero. Actually, negatives make sense before zeros as people started to develop things over time. All right, the next type, Q. What is Q? We're going to have to go to set Biller notation. These are all A over B, such that A is a int, and B is a int, and B is not 0, and A, B have no common factors. If that is true, it's in my set. Defining with set builder notation the reals and the complex gets a little bit more difficult. So I'll just call the reals and call the complex. <laughs> what are the reals? The reals are the rationals including the who. If I take the rationals and put them together with the irrationals, we get the reals. 
things like square root of 2, pi e would have to show all those particular things. If I take a rational number and all of the irrational numbers together, those are the real numbers. One way of looking at the reals are the real numbers are all numbers that can be written in decimal form, like 0 0.1. What is 0 0.1? It's 1 tenth. What's interesting about decimal form for the rationals? When I write a, a rational in decimal form, what do I notice about the decimal? What is 1 tenth? 0 0.1 followed by what? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 on to repeat zeros, right? What is 1 ninth? in decimal form. Oh man, people are pulling out your phones? Come on. Point, one, 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 one. So what do I notice about the rationals? If you do a rational, what is the decimal going to do? It's going to have either repeating zeros, which we call a terminator, like 0.25 is what fraction? One fourth. 0.3 repeating. One third, right? So those are ones we should know. <laughs> that's, that's the other bad thing about calculators. People just constantly start hitting the calculator. And it's like, well, one, the calculator is approximating because it can't do a 10. It can't do certain ones, right? We should be able to do things and understand the pattern. So what would be a real number? If rationals are all decimals that either terminate or repeat, like, what did I just say? It's a decimal that terminates or repeats. What's an irrational? Not that. Could you not that statement? What is, it terminates or repeats, nodded? It does not terminate, and it does not repeat. So if you would have a decimal, do you see the pattern? Yes. Does this pattern stop? In other words, will it all of a sudden have infinite numbers of zeros? No. Does this pattern, on the other hand, have repetition, like 0.33333 or 0.123123123? No. You see the pattern, but the pattern does not terminate and it does not repeat. What does that tell you about this number, which is a number between 0 and 1? It's purely irrational. It cannot be represented by a fraction. That is a place on the number line that could never be represented by an int over an int in simplest form, or just can't be represented by an n over an int. Kind of interesting. We could do lots of those. So that's something that can't be represented. So what's a real? Decimals that either terminate or repeat, which by the way are rational, or don't do that. That'd be irrational. Put those together, it's a decimal. That's a real. What's a complex? A real and imaginary. It's a two-part object, right? It no longer is. Everybody before this is singleton objects. They only need one concept, right? A single thing represents the number. What's necessary for the complex? They have two parts, a real part and an imaginary part. The imaginary part is a real part times i. What in the world is i? When you told me to square root of negative 1, what does that mean? It's the special number that when I multiply it by itself, it becomes minus 1. There obviously, no real can do that because a positive times positive is positive, a negative times negative is positive, 0 times 0 is positive, is 0, sorry. What times itself equals negative 1? I shall declare it to be i. I needed a symbol, so they represent it as such, right? So that's complex numbers. We need to know what every single one of those are and how to work it. And the last one that we use a lot of is what's called singletons. A singleton set is just simply a set of a single object. So we have some sets that we need to know. The set of nothing, the set of everything, sets of numbers. And we need to know all these numbers because we use them all the time. If you want to look up history of numbers, it's kind of interesting. You have the naturals, the ints, the rationals, the reals, the complex. There, there's hypercomplex. They can go all these as far as you want to go in terms of looking at objects themselves. And then obviously for singletons, that's just necessary when we do one thing at a time. All right, so now we've got our stuff. Now that we understand what our stuff is, our toy, 